So tonight, we are honored also to have Toronto writer Arlene Chan uh, with her tribute to her mother, Jean Lum, who's an Order of Canada recipient. Now, as she approached forward, she's already on her mark, she's great. I'm going to tell you who Arlene Chan is, author and Chinatown historian, who has written seven books about the history, culture, and traditions of Chinese in Canada. She devotes her time to researching, writing, lecturing, and relating her first-hand experiences and family stories as a Chinatown tour guide for Heritage Toronto and the Lord Museum. It all began for my mother in the year 1919 in a small mining town called Nanaimo. Her first years of life were uneventful until 1923 when the Chinese Immigration Act, known also as the Chinese Exclusion Act, replaced the head tax and banned further entry of Chinese into Canada. Furthermore, any Chinese in Canada, whether they were born here or naturalized had to apply for a citizen uh, identification card and this is the identification card for my mother when she was four years old in the year 1923. It was a rough time during the Great Depression. My mother's family now 12 children and she had to quit school at the age of 12 to help support the family. Four years later at the age of 16 she moved to Toronto to work. When she arrived here in the 1930s, she was struck by the sight of the Bachelor Society. So many Chinese men, so few women, and only a dozen or so Chinese families. The first impression was to later direct her community life. At age 17, with the loan of $200, she opened a fruit store at Bathurst and St. Clair. She married my father, Doyle Lum, in 1939 at the Knox Presbyterian Church. This should have been a happy occasion, but my mother lost her citizenship and took on the status of alien because my father was from China. He was one of over 80,000 Chinese who had paid the head tax to come to Canada. Despite long hours working in the family fruit store and raising us six children, she gave back to her community. She volunteered for the many war relief drives. She was the president of various women's associations and a trustee for the Toronto Chinese Public School. After the Second World War, things start looking up for the Chinese community. This VJ celebration in Chinatown was a happy occasion. The Chinese Exclusion Act was repealed. The Chinese got the right to vote. The Chinese could now enter into professions like medicine and law across the country. But there were still many immigration roadblocks that prevented family reunification for the Bachelor Society. In 1957, my mother was the only woman among the male delegation to, meet, to make an appeal to the newly elected Prime Minister John Diefenbaker to make further ch changes to the immigration laws. Soon she became known as a spokesperson for the Chinese community. One important issue was Chinatown. In the early 1960s, two-thirds of our Chinatown was demolished for the construction of our new city hall. There was no community consultation. After City Hall opened in 1965, the city had plans for further expropriation of land in Chinatown. 
This time around, the Chinese community fought back. My mother headed up the Save Chinatown Committee that stopped further expropriation, extended the boundaries of our Chinatown to Bathurst Street, and retained the neighborhood designation of Chinatown. My mother's mentor was Pauline McGibbon, who later became the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. She encouraged my mother to extend her work outside the Chinese community. How did she do this? Through Chinese culture. She established the Chinese Community Dancers, a troupe that performed across Canada. The highlight was successfully auditioning to perform on Parliament Hill in Ottawa for Canada's 100th birthday on July 1st, 1967. The dance troupe visited the residence of Governor General Roland Michener on this trip. After this performance, my mother was presented to Her Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. My mother also reached out through Chinese food. This was at my parents' restaurant in Chinatown, the Kuang Chow restaurant. There she entertained politicians and other restaurant customers, introducing them to Chinese food and along the way helping to make Chinatown a destination rather than a neighborhood to avoid. By becoming active outside of Chinatown, she put a face on the Chinese community for the government, the media, and Torontonians. As a Chinese Canadian woman, she achieved many firsts. And among her many awards are the Frank Deck Award, the Governor General's Award, City of Toronto Award of Merit, and the Queen's Silver and Golden Jubilee <coughs> Awards. But the highest honor was being the first Chinese Canadian woman to receive the Order of Canada. She also felt so honored to be a citizenship court judge who gave the oath of citizenship to hundreds of new Canadians. Quite a feat for someone who had been stripped of her citizenship when she married my father. Her legacy lives on um, with the annual Jean Lum Awards now in their 20th year, and my mother attended for the last time in 2001. For our city celebration of Canada 150, a poster of her was displayed in TTC bus shelters and at the entrance of City Hall. And last but not least, which is um, something that I just learned today, and I'm so thrilled to hear this. I learned that um, the new school that would be built by the Toronto District School Board at the Bathurst and Lakeshore will be named the Jean Lum Public School. So I just want to conclude, as a child growing up in British Columbia, going to segregated schools, being teased and mocked for being Chinese, not being allowed to venture out of Chinatown, she felt outside the circle of Canadian life. Throughout her lifetime, she broke down many, many barriers as a community activist, as a woman in a man's world, as a spokesperson. She lived to see the day when she and the Chinese community were no longer outside the circle, but an integral part of Canada's dynamic, multi-ethnic, and multi-racial mosaic. Thank you. Thank you.